everyone. Welcome back to Plaid Paint Night. We're so excited to have Suzanne here painting Cherished Birch with us. A lot of our friends are joining us from 2017. This is our first paint night of 2018. I We're know. So excited. Excited. I know our friends, Jillian, I know you're, I'm sure you're out there again tonight. You paint with along with us every single month. We're excited to have you back too. Yeah. And this is such a fun painting because you can customize it to whatever. That's right. And that's what we're going to show you, how you can customize it for anybody that you love. So. And we're using folk art tonight as always. And we're so excited to get started with Suzanne painting this in just about an hour. Let's yeah. get started, yeah. Suzanne. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. So this is the painting that we're going to be doing and I'm gonna show you some new techniques that you can use. And let me show you also, so you can be thinking about this while we're painting. So I also did this little um, uh, idea board for you because not everybody has a Valentine uh, that's the same. So this is like little spot is like if you have a dog or a kitten or any kind of pet, bird, you know, whatever you have. Uh, you can do a name plus a name. You could do just I love you. You could do um, uh, just the year. So be thinking about what you want to put in yours. You also, like this one, is just for me and my husband. My name's Suzanne, and my husband's name's Dave. So it's just S and D. So we're going to be able to personalize this, and you could do more than one. Maybe you, you know, watch this one time, do one painting, and then you could do multiple ones for your family. If you have uh, more than one child, I mean, you could do a child's name and then do, you know, more than one heart. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now the little sa the sample that I did is a, it was a 10 by 10. This is a 12 by 12, which is what I recommend. Um, but if you have, if, even if you have a rectangle canvas, that's okay. If you don't have a square or if you have something smaller or larger, you just can adapt as we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hopefully you have stencil tape. Stencil tape is a really cool to, tool to use especially when we're doing stripes like or trees like this. So we, so, and we're going to be doing an ombre in the background. So you want to take your stencil tape and we're going to, let's, let's just, let me see if I can put both of these up here at one time. Okay. So like this tree right here, you're going to take your stencil tape and we're and see how I have it right across the edge and a little bit of showing. So there's no wrong way to do this because trees are all organic and, so we're gonna put down, so this part you're gonna paint pink and the tape is going to be covering um, the white part. So, and I wrapped it around the side and see around the top. So the tree is about an inch and a half to two inches. So this one, and again, don't worry about everything being perfect because you want it a little bit organic. So this one, you can put two pieces of tape together and it depends on the width of your tape too. You can be using, you know, this is a folk art stencil tape. It's a great tape because it seals really well, but then you also can easily remove it. Sometimes it is different, stencil tape is different than masking tape because masking tape is super sticky. So now you see there's a, like a little space right here. So I'm gonna come over just a little bit and I'm gonna go at an angle and see way down here I'm gonna come close to that tape. And again, no wrong way to do it. I would just make sure I push down the edge and you're gonna do the top, go around the edge and then go around the top. So this tree is a little bit smaller, skinnier than this tree. So I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit. Okay. And this is considered, using tape like this is considered masking. So we're masking the um, canvas. So we're not going to paint on that part. And then when we reveal it, um, it'll be white. So now we're doing this edge of the big tree right here. Okay, so we're gonna, I gave a little space. And this time I'm gonna go almost like it's straight. I'm gonna, Kind of eyeball it. Again, you don't need to get out a ruler or anything. Just pull it straight down. Okay. And now this is going to be the wide part, the widest part of our canvas, because this is where we're going to do our heart. So if our heart is like this, and you can kind of do it with your finger, and you can go, okay, about right here is where I need my tree. 
And again, nothing's exact. You just okay. Now, here's a tip that I want to give you. Right in here, this is your biggest tree. I want you to do this. I want you to just tape off a little X in there. And the reason you're going to do that is because when I was doing my test, I accidentally painted right in the middle of that because I got so excited about doing my ombre. So you just want to visually make sure you don't do that. Um, if you do, it's okay because you can go back with white, but this helps you that way so you'll know. Don't paint in there. Hey, and Suzanne, we mm -hmm. have a ton of new people joining us. Oh, so just great. To okay. catch everyone up out there, if you would just take a look at what we're painting here. If you're just now joining us for the first time, this is our first of 2018 painted right. plaid night. So what we do is paint along this fabulous painting in just about an hour. Right. And this is kind of our Valentine's, Galentine's Day theme. And if you're just uh, joining us now and didn't know about the paint night before, you can always replay this video on demand. If you're watching with us and painting along with us, share all of your creations with hashtag paint with plaid to share them with us. And I hope we uh, have our folk art paint that we're featuring tonight. Yes, we which do. Is very exciting. We're going to go over, after we get the, the tape on, we're going to go over and look at all the paint and our supplies. So now, and again, if you're just now joining us, what we're using is the plaid stencil tape. And this is different than regular masking tape. Regular masking tape is super sticky and sometimes it's hard to remove from a canvas, especially after you paint over it. But this is special because it's a low tack. So we're gonna do this tree and we're using it as a mask. So with this tree, see it kind of comes down in front. So we're gonna tilt it a little bit. And again, you can feel free to make your trees however you want. There's really no right or wrong way. You could do a lot of skinny trees and one big one. Um, it's really up to you. You could do two big trees. You don't have to follow me exactly if you don't want. Feel free, I know how artists are. It's, you know, when somebody tells me exactly what I need to do, sometimes I'll rebel and go, no. But you know, and then other people just like to follow along and try their own thing later. So now I'm doing just a little bit thicker. And again, I'm going across the bottom and the top. And now this tree right here is going off the canvas. Now this just makes a more interesting composition with the trees overlapping, some a little bigger than the others, instead of everything being so regimented. So now we're gonna go off the canvas. And, and as we're tilt behind here. Ooh, taping off there, just to say hello to a lot of our friends. We have Tracy from the UK. Oh, hello wow, Tracy hi. and Terry joining us. Uh, we have friends from Atlanta, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, all oh my over God. the all place. All over. And we're excited to kick off 2018 with this really fun design that's so customizable. Yes. Now, I do know one thing we're not gonna talk about tonight. In the South, in Georgia, the last time we did this, we did a Christmas tree and I said, oh, it never snows here in Georgia. We all wish for it and it snowed the next day. So we're not gonna talk about snow. We've got like 60 degrees though, so. You guys, um, in the still in the cold area, you're still going through winter. Okay, so now I'll let you guys keep working on your um, tape. And again, if you're just joining us, let me show you this idea too. This is one of the, this is the S and D. This is for Suzanne and Dave. You can do any combination of people that you're in love with. And then here's some other ideas. Spot, Jen and Bill is like, if you wanted to do names, you could just do, I love you. You could just do a date. So, and then, you know, also if you have like, you want to do all of your children, you could do that. If you have lots of animals, you yeah. could do that. So I, it's like the possibilities are endless. Inspirational words, like right. strength, power. Would yeah. Be oh, fun. that's good. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to Jen and Bill. Yeah. Shout out Jen. to Jen and Bill who, <laughs> who are here at Plaid. <laughs> So, and there's people literally from all over the country and all over the world joining us, Suzanne. Oh, wow, that's so exciting. Okay, so now we're gonna go over some of our supplies. We've used our stencil tape, and now we're gonna get ready to introduce, this is our folk art paint. Um, we have just fantastic colors in folk art. So we're going to do an ombre. This is um, baby pink. It's one of my favorite, just really sweet pinks. And this one is Parisian pink, and it's a lot more you know, brighter, you can see. This one is an ivory white. Instead of doing a bright white, we're doing more of an ivory white for the birch tree. And then this one is thunder gray, which we're gonna use as some of the shadow work. 
and the same, and this is a medium gray. So another thing I wanna show you is a trick. If you get a new bottle like this, this is, and it comes, our folk art comes sealed so that it, um, you know, it's easy to open. So you don't have to open the lid and then open it again. So this is a trick. Instead of um, trying to cut this and do, and I don't know a lot of you people that you're like me, you use your teeth sometimes, which is not good. If you take it and turn it the opposite direction, you can, you can pull it off. Now, I just put on lotion on my hands because I wanted to make sure my hands were not dry. And so <laughs> it won't come off. But um, let me do the other one. Let me see. I've got lotion on my hands. See if I got one that can. Oh, here we go. Look. I just did it. There we go. Even with lotion on my hands, I got it off. So the cool part about this is see, then when you open our folk art paint, it's ready to go. You don't have to then open it again and then open it again. So the first thing we're going to do is go with our baby pink. And we're going, to, we're going to start with the ombre. And what we're gonna use is our angle brushes. And we're gonna take our largest angle brush. This comes as a set. This is a fantastic set from uh, Folk Art. They're nice Tycon um, brushes and they're smooth and they're angled. And this is good because then you can also do straight line work and then you can do flat surface work. So we've got all the different sizes. We're gonna go with the largest to do uh, the ombre. And if you're just now joining us and don't have your supplies yet, you can always replay this video later on demand for Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day, or just a fun night in. Check out the links in uh, this post and you can actually get hooked up with a discount code to shop plaid online for discounts on folk art supplies as well. Okay, so the first thing I've done is on my palette paper, I'm gonna, and you need to um, put out about 50 cents worth of the um, baby pink. And then we're also gonna do a little squirt of the Parisian pink. So it's a brighter pink. So we're going to start with our ombre. We're gonna start with the lightest color first. And again, when you start with a new brush, um, you can go back and forth. You can either put it in the water. Sometimes I, these brushes, you don't necessarily have to because they're just so soft and ready to go. But when you load your brush, you make an X, you dip it into the paint, and then you go back and forth making an X, and that will load it into all the bristles. So now we're gonna take the paint, and we're gonna start at the top of the canvas. So what we're doing is the top of the canvas is going to be light pink, and it's going to go down into the dark. So we're just starting with the light first to start our ombre. So you can make sure you've pressed down all of your tape edges, and then you can just start painting right along, and you can go over the tape, because that's what it's there for, to protect it. So I'm going down the side, and this is where, the, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, because we're going to go back over this with the Paris pink. This is really nice, creamy paint. It's uh, fairly opaque. Um, so you just load your brush then for your next one. And I go across the top and cross over my stencil tape. And that's the beauty of stencil tape. See, so now I don't have to worry about um, getting the, the paint on the white, it's protecting it. So I'm gonna do long strokes here, okay? And I'm not doing the bottom right now, just so I can show you guys, but if you wanna go ahead and do the bottom of the canvas, you can, or you can do it afterwards. Okay. That ombre is looking gorgeous, Suzanne. And if you're just now joining us, let us know if this is your first time painting along with us or if you've joined us in the past. Uh, this is our first paint along paint night party of 2018. We're excited to kick this off with a really, really super cute and customizable design celebrating mm -hmm. lo all things love. love and Galentines and Valentines mm -hmm. uh, or even just a relaxing night painting and just relaxing at home, snuggling up if it's uh, cold where you are. I know it's still snowing in a lot of parts of the I country. Know. Not here in Georgia, thankfully, no, no, like our last paint night, Suzanne. Yes, I know. And then <laughs> here you go. Here's where I put the X, just to remind me not to paint, because see, it's so tempting just to paint that large area. You're like, ooh, that, but I skip it because I have my little X, it remind, helped me remember. And so now I'm just gonna go down in this area, okay. And then, you know, if you wanted to, in the future, you could do this again, and you could pick another two different, uh, Folk Art has 
it's so many paints and so many different shades that you could do greens or blues or purples and just pick a light one and then a darker one and you could make your own, you could customize your own um, ombres instead of, we're, we chose pink of course because of uh, Valentine's Day and it's the love color. So, color of the, of hearts. So and let's see. we do have Diane. Hello. We're so glad you're joining us for the first time. Okay. Michelle, just watching. It's fun just to watch paint and it's even more fun when you paint along with us. Check out the discount code for supplies in the description of this video uh, and paint along with us. You can always replay this video on demand for Valentine's, Galentine's, or just for fun. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to go ahead and, and get some of the Parisian pink. And this is the much brighter and darker pink. And we're gonna go from the bottom now of the canvas and we're gonna paint up. And we're just gonna go right over the pink. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more. Okay, and just come straight up. Now, I'm just kind of dry brushing, you can see, and dry brush just means when you've run out of paint a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna do right beside it so you can see. So again, don't have to worry with the tape. It's pretty cool how the tape protects everything. Okay. Suzanne, we have so many first time viewers. Oh my with gosh, us. It's this so is exciting. Great. We have people from all over. We have Marlene, Marianne, Michelle, lots of M names. Uh -huh. Lola <laughs> says hello. Wendy, first time watching from South Carolina, and Stacy from East Texas. Uh, and if you're new to Paint with Plaid Night, if you're painting along with us, share your creations with hashtag paint with plaid, and you can always replay our on-demand library of past paint nights, which Suzanne has been featured several times, and she's yes. an amazing teacher and designer here at plaid. Yeah, And always I, has fun, fun paintings, and it's you. really fun to, yeah. to learn these techniques in such a fun environment using folk art. Yes, it is, because again, the paint is so opaque and really just creamy and easy to blend. Um, and we picked, you know, of course, a, a darker and a lighter of a color. And then you can just see how I'm just, and again, play with the ombres, you know, yourself. You could do it back and forth like this if you want. I'm just doing longer strokes up. Um, and, you know, painting should just be fun. There's not a right or wrong way. And, if, and the other beautiful thing about working with folk art acrylics is if you don't like something, just let it dry, and then you can just paint over it. Um, so it's very forgiving. Um, so, so now it just depends on your, your aesthetic for what you want for your ombre. If you want your ombre to come farther up, you can. And question from Sally out there uh -huh. about how often we have paint nights. We, it's about every month. Typically, this is our first one to kick off 2018 and our next one, we're going to preview at the end of this painting. It is really exciting. Suzanne actually painted this and taught it as a class at Creativation, yeah, which is so our industry so mm -hmm. show. It's, I think everyone's going to love it. And actually the event listing and supply list is going to go live right after this uh, painting tonight. So this little piece right in here, I know I've painted over it. It's right in here. It's this little bitty point. I'm going to put just a little bit in that area and just come up just so that you, I have a little bit of ombre there. So now, if I want to blend it even more and make it more of a smoother blend, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to dab off some of the hot pink. Again, I'm not going to wash it. I'm not going to. I'm just going to dab off some of that and I'm going to get some of the lighter pink. And again, go back and forth to load it onto my brush. And then I'm going to go sideways and just kind of pick up some of the paint. And this is a judgment call on your part. You just kind of, you, you go from the pink, the light, and then you just kind of go down and decide where you want to stop. See, like that was good to me. And then again, came back, come back, load my brush, and right in this area, I'm gonna start going back side to side, pick up some of the paint, and see how well it blends. And again, it's just up to you, you can, um, and then if you go back up, see how I picked up a little bit of the pink? So again, this is just, you know, and a lot of painting is just trial and error. There's really no right way, like I said, to do it. Okay, now I'm gonna do it again. Again, I'm just gonna load my brush with the lighter pink. So you guys just, like I said, you can do all kinds of different colors. And you can even ombre from uh, 
light to dark, like if you just want to use white in a color, you can do that too. Again, I'm starting at the top of it, and then that's when I go down into the darker and pull it. And then just, and I'm just lightly brushing across to pick up the color. And let us know if you are painting along with this, what you're gonna paint in your heart. If you're gonna do a empowering word, or I love you, or the year, or initials, your pet's name, let us know what you're gonna paint in your heart tonight. Yes. People from okay. Oregon, a lot more, a lot more friends from Georgia as well. Okay. So and Heather's loving. She loves folk art metallics, which I know that oh, we use yeah. that in next month's painting. Yes, Don't we do. Them. We use. Oh, we use a lot of fun stuff because we have a lot of new paints, and we have a lot of new formulas. So we're going to use some fun stuff next next month too. So we'll show you that in just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and keep watching to be the first person to see next month's painting. It is so cute. Okay, so Tim, if you want to show, I'm going to rinse my paintbrush out. Brush? Woo! Rinse my paintbrush out, back and forth, and get your paintbrush clean, because now we're going to get to do um, the big reveal. But before, we're going to let it dry just a little bit. So if you want to fan your painting, if you're at home, um, this is a time that if you're at home uh, and you can, you can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Uh, we just don't do it here just because there's so many of us, and then you couldn't hear me if I was using a hair dryer. So, um, but you could use a hair dryer to, to um, uh, clean it. I mean, not clean it, <laughs> to dry it. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush. That's, I'm thinking of two different things. Okay, so now I've got my brush clean, and I'm going to show you now, um, we're going to take off our tape, and when we take off our tape, then we're gonna go back and paint with the, um, the ivory white. Oh, it's so, the big reveal, Suzanne. So you can use this to hold, see, because now we don't have any paint here. So we're gonna take from the back, okay? And don't worry if any paint seeped in, in the middle of any of your tape, it doesn't matter because again, these are trees. So we, we want it a little rough, okay? So see, there's a little piece there, but that's okay because I'm doing a, I'm doing a um, tree. Okay, so now. I'm, I'm painting a tree. Oh, there we go. That's gonna be it's that really tree. Sharp. That's a very clean one. Yes, well the folk art uh, stencil tape, it's one of those things that you see at the craft store and you think, I don't know if I really need to use that, but you can use it for lots of other things besides stenciling because it is a low tack. Um, it's just a good tape to have when you don't wanna have something so sticky. Absolutely, and if yeah. you're just not joining us, use that discount code in the description of the video above and save on your supplies for this and so much more on plaidonline.com. And just a shout out to Jennifer. She's gonna put oh. her daughter's name in the heart, which is a really, really Aww. sweet idea. Aww. Oh my goodness, oh, this is so, okay. Okay. Becky is okay. making one for a wedding gift and giving it next week. That is such a good oh, idea. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, They're gonna love that. Anything love that is, that. yes, it's specially done. That's, that's gonna, gonna be awesome. so personal, Becky. What a great idea. Okay. So I got a little bit of paint right here, but again, don't worry. That's just a little bit because I'm gonna be able to cover it up with some white paint. So now I'm gonna take my little X's off. Okay, and then I'm gonna wipe my hands off just a little bit I mean, I with them so I get my hands clean. So now you can see the ombre is there and people will wonder, how did you do that before you painted? And I, I messed up just a, a few little areas, let's see, when I was taking off my tape. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna patch up just that little area. And I scraped it on this uh, easel over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Patch up just a little little area. And that ombre technique is so great. You can use it on so many different types oh my of gosh. projects. And yes. the folk art is so great for that. Yes, yes it is. And ombre is just a beautiful, and it's not that hard. You saw how we did it. You can even blend more than uh, uh, one color. You could also do like a rainbow. Uh, Ombre. Okay, so now we're going to go to our half inch angle. And the reason we're doing the half inch is just so we can have a little bit more control. And we're going to, um, you're going to put uh, the ivory white on your palette. I'm just gonna turn my palette around. And again, you only need about a little more than a, a quarter size. So let me get my little piece out of the way. 
Okay, so now we're, again, we're gonna load our brush, and again, we're gonna go back and forth making an X. Just to load the brush. Okay, and now we're going to go over the white, and this is again, like I said, this is a um, ivory white, so it's got a little bit of color to it, not a lot. And you might not can see this on camera, but if you have it at home. Now, here's where I don't want you to get too fussy with going along the line. I want you to um, go ahead, even if you do this, watch, I'm gonna, like, even if it's like a little bump that comes out, that's okay. So don't, don't worry about that. So we're going to, you can use the paintbrush on its side and it's flat like this, and I can make a lot of good coverage, or I can use it straight up and down like this and I can kind of wiggle it to make, and you can do more of a thinner, thinner line. And it gives you a little bit more control. Now, some of you out there are going, well, Suzanne, why are we painting this? It, it's already white, I don't need to paint it white. Well, then that's just the raw canvas, and this paint is coating the canvas and making it creamy and also just making it smooth. So when we do all of the um, distressing work, it will have something to glide over. Otherwise, the canvas is just raw and it, it tends to like drag a little bit. So. You know, that folk art is so creamy. Yes, and with. that's why it like puts this nice, see even there, just having a little thickness of the paint is really nice too. And I love this idea so from body. Becky. She says that she might make this using blue shading instead of pink, which is so great. You can yes. customize this oh, in my so gosh. many different ways. Yes, please the, do. The colors, the names. And you know what? Please share it with us at hashtag plaid crafts on Instagram. Yes, if you have hashtag Instagram. plaid crafts and hashtag paint with plaid. Um, yes. So we want to see what you do. So now you're going to do each tree like this. You're just going to, and this is going to give us a good solid coat. So how's everybody doing in the we class? Actually, and we have a question from oh, Lynn actually. Okay. Uh, a, how about a package of Filbert three pack for the angles? Uh, the, Maybe uh, the film. sizing. Yes, you could do that. Absolutely. You know, um, and you know, I always say, especially doing art, you can kind of make do with what you have. I mean, I work for a craft company. Of course, plaid is like the best. I've always used uh, folk art paints even before I was working here, just because of the quality. But and also their paint brushes and all. But sometimes you you know you use what you have at home that you've had before. Um, so this is a great painting to do a little bit of variety because it's, you know, you don't have to have everything just. And actually, while everyone's filling in their trees with the, what, that's the ivory color, is that right, yes. Suzanne? Let's see what everyone, all of our friends at Flat are doing here. Hey. Jesse, what are you going to put in your heart? Do you know I'm yet? going to put J and J. That's J my, and J. My boyfriend's Your initial. boyfriend's. Okay. Mm -hmm. So cute. And how, you're just still filling in over here, Jesse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you going to write in yours? Murphy. Murphy. My dog. That's not Murphy. He's a rescue from the Humane Society. Oh. Uh, my dog's name is Lucy. She's Lucy. Oh. Rescues are the Lucy. best. Laura's filling hey. her trees over here. Yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah. John. Yeah. John loves animals. Are you mm -hmm. an animal or a bond? It's a toss up between my wife and my chihuahua. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to decide at the last minute. What about y'all? Where do y'all put your paint your heart? Me and my husband's initials. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a family. A family one. Family tree. That's great. Aww. It's such a fun Valentine's or Galentine's day idea. And actually, let's take a look, Tim, at some of the other samples that Suzanne did with Spot, Jen and Bill. Again, a shout out, Jen and Bill. <laughs> some I love you, the year, Thank some you. fun, empowering words, just love or, or Galentine's. This is such mm -hmm. a fun Galentine's Day project. Now, when you get to the bigger tree, you can use your larger uh, paintbrush um, if you want, and then go back to your smaller to do the smaller trees. So don't feel don't feel like you have to do exactly what I'm telling you. you and, a can couple, use a, and a uh -huh. couple questions out uh -huh. there, and I think we're doing it this way because of the draw time and things like that. But uh, painting the canvas first and then taping it, and then just another suggestion: to well, paint the canvas white first. I don't know if that would. Well, here's the reason the I don't like doing that, and but you can. But this is why I didn't. See all the organic lines I have going on? I like it being like I've painted the tree instead of the white being so sharp with the mm. tape. So it's up to you. If you want really sharp trees and you don't want to have, then you can do it first. 
Um, but I like the, the painterliness of the, of the white. So, you know, again, there's no right or wrong, but that's, you know, that's the reasoning why I did it uh, this way. So, so now, has everybody got a lot of their white done, or how are yeah. we doing? We're doing pretty good. A little bit more. Okay. Well, while we're waiting, guys, and you can um, finish yours, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're going to do next. And then again, if you accidentally get something out, you can always touch up. Don't worry about it making a mistake. Okay, so the, the next color we're going to use is this, um, uh, I think it was called Thunder Gray. It's a great gray, actually. Um, it's, it's really pretty. It's called Thunder Gray. Thunder Gray, and then we have Medium, but the, this uh, kind of taupey color is Thunder Gray. So it's just a nice, and that's the thing about folk art paints. There's such a range. Uh, you can get just, hang on, let me get it. Started. You can just get so many different colors and play with just, and they're so affordable. I mean, I have like just, we, we actually store, I store mine, which you probably see in a lot of uh, studios where people store it upside down so you can see the colors. So we just have mounds of, you know, just beautiful colors of different shades of paint. So is everybody... Almost ready for their okay. work. Okay, so while everybody's still painting and you and you at home, before we, um, I'm just going to show you this before we actually uh, do, before you actually try it. This is a block of wood, and I set on the supply list to have a block of wood, and it doesn't have to be this exact piece of wood. Um, I have some. These are from my studio when I do smaller pieces. There's like a small piece, that's an even smaller little piece. Just scrap wood is all it needs to be. And it needs to be thick enough to where your fingers can hold it. Um, because if you use something so thin, like a piece of cardboard, is you know, it's a little harder, so it's good to have a piece of wood. And you're like, what could you do with this? Well, this is, you were gonna use it for distressing. And that's what's gonna create this. There's a lot of videos out there right now that, um, that do birch trees using uh, uh, credit cards and things like that. But I like the little block. It's like a distressing. And Suzanne, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned like if you happen to not have a block of wood, uh -huh. using cardboard or like a foam piece. Right. You can use a pose, uh, a foam piece. You can use a, a piece of cardboard. Maybe take two pieces of cardboard together or gl hot glue them together to give it a little bit because you want something that you can actually hold your fingers on. Got it. If okay. you if it's too flat, you can't can't slide it. Recycle some packaging right. or things like that. Exactly. You can use, you know, get creative. Any kind of little uh, um, a little block, anything that's, um, I don't know, you use one of your children's blocks, but you know, you can always wipe it off afterwards or paint it. Okay, so I've coated the front of my block and I just dipped it in the paint. So you can just watch first before you actually do yours. So to make this distressing look, I'm going to put just the edge, the edge of my block on the tree, and then it's, and I'm just gonna drag it just a little bit. See, just like that, just a little, just a little on the edge. That's if I want it kind of subtle. So if you wanna start out kind of subtle, just so you, cause you're not sure, then I just kind of pat it, and it kind of, it, it sticks a little bit. And birch trees have stripes of, of bark, and I am, Barely touching the canvas. I mean, barely. And I've still got paint. So now if I want to do it a little bit harder, I can drag it just a little bit. And now I'm not letting my, my paint's not dry yet. Okay, so that's why it's smearing a little bit, which is good because that's the blending. So now I can go back and get some more paint on my block. And is this, are you gonna end up layering the colors? Yes, using? I'm going okay, to layer great. the colors. This is just the first lighter color we're doing. And again, this is where you do things like this, where it's, a, see how thick that is compared to how thin that is? That's good because that gives you variety. The reason the block is so good is because it's organically making you do it. You're not, you're not, you're not going to be sure as what it's going to do, which is kind of exciting. It's a fun way to, because that's what, see how I just patted it? Just very lightly, and it did that. And I love the techniques that we're learning tonight, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. We have the ombre technique with folk art. We mm -hmm. have this technique with the wood block, block. or cardboard or whatever mm -hmm. kind of foam or whatever you might have. And just a shout out to Emily. This is so cute. In her heart, she's putting the year that she and her husband met. That Aww. is so cute. Aww. 
Oh, listen how sweet all this is. So cute. Okay, so now I'm just getting more. <laughs> Tim is Tim's laughing. Okay, but it is it is sad. It is sappy. But here's what I got the paint on the block on the edge, and then I'm just gonna tap the edge down. So that gives you like a crisp edge to your tree. Okay. So here we go. So we're gonna, and then again, you can just tap it. And you know, also, you can make like that, just some cuts in a tree, and you know, play with it using just the edge of the block. And as it and as it loses its paint, you can it gets different, it gives you different effects. Okay. You're making it look so easy, and it really is, and it right, really Suzanne? Is. It really this, is. So I'm easy. telling you, this is this is so fun. Now, folk art, we sell a large distressing block like this. And it has a handle on it, and it's for furniture. It's about this. It's about I think it's like four inches by yeah, four it's inches, big. and it has a handle. And you might say, well, then why don't I just go get a block of wood? Why do I need to get the distressing tool from Plaid? And and I'll tell you why. And you probably never noticed this. In a, it's in all the craft stores. It's just a little block of wood hanging on it with a with a um, handle, and it's coated. It has a nice coating on it. it has a wonderful handle on it. And it is so affordable, and you can and it go glides onto the onto uh, furniture when you're doing a big piece. And here's the key: then you can wash it and then use another color. So a lot of uh, furniture today is uh, distressing with lots of different um, colors. Ooh, see that? The paint just grabbed my block. And I love that you're using the smaller because our amazing. Uh block would be too big for something like this yes. size. Yes, oh my but gosh, it's yeah. perfect for furniture. Yeah. Or if you're doing a larger size canvas of the, yes. the same painting, oh would be my amazing. Oh my god, and I have them. Um, I just couldn't use it on this because the block literally is like that big. Um, and quick question from Dottie, mm -hmm. great question. Thank uh -huh. you for this question, Dottie. Are you using the smooth or rough cut edge of the block? Um, I'm using the smooth part, but you could use the rough, I would try both. It's one of those that you can try, but I am using the smooth part. Okay. Oh, and this, I love this. Uh, Tim, if you want to just show in this again. So we're, we're doing uh, this amazing painting in just about an hour, our paint along party. And if you're just now joining us, you can always replay this with us. Love this idea from Renee to put in her heart. She's going to do one for each of her grandchildren. Aww, that is so that's cute. That's so sweet. All of their names in heart. So now again, I've just put the paint on, I put the paint on the block, but I'm just using just the egg, edge, edge. <laughs> I've already gone on to Easter. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now this tree is in front of this tree, if you see. So we're going to add a little bit of shadow back here. So I can do that by just tapping the edge of the tree down. This just helps me. See, like that. And then you can even pull it. And all of this subtleness is the part that's so fun. You don't, you just tap your block into the paint. You don't have to get it very, you know, super coated. And then again, let it just tap onto. And the thing about birch trees is they have the stripes, you know, and the, um, and the uh, bark that's like flaking off. So this is cool. So now this is again, just our layering. We're just putting this underneath and we're gonna go back with the darker mid gray, uh, medium gray. So. And I loved the ideas of customizing this with colors, even the scale of this. Oh gosh, yes, you, you could, could do make this. a huge one for you your could. home decor, which you would could. be so pretty. Mm -hmm. Like in a lot of like neutrals or whatever to match your decor would be amazing because folk art comes in so many different colors. Right. I mean, it's just. I mean, this is th and this is such a fun technique. And this would be great. Even kids can do this. Painting with a block like this to create a distressed tree is like it's just fun. Okay, so now. We've done this, and I'm gonna go on the top, just kind of tap the top just to give my tree on the top and the bottom a little bit of texture. Again, add a little bit with my sides of my little, I'm making it look like my tree has a little bit of, you know, wear and tear, because it's been there for a long time, and I've, I'm gonna carve into it. Okay. And I love this idea from Dottie. She's going to do one for her daughter and her sister-in-law for Valentine's Day. Aww. This is so fun to just paint as a gift or paint along mm -hmm. with a friend or as a date night is a great, oh my gosh. great, great yeah, idea too. Fun. Yeah, you could each, you could each do your, uh, do a, um, paint a tree together and like do your own, you know, do a little carving and kind of surprise each other. 
That would be fun. Okay, so now you're going to take... <laughs> I'm sorry. We're having a good time at our party tonight. <laughs> they're all laughing at me. I don't know if they're laughing at me or with me. They're laughing with you. I think they're laughing with me. I know, always. Oh, woo! Okay, so now we're going to go on to the darker color. And this is the medium gray. So again, you don't need a whole lot. Um, let me make sure. And actually, as you're uh, pouring that, Suzanne, Judith, a couple questions. Okay. A little bit more about the Bogart stencil tape, and then also, okay, uh, idea could you use a palette knife instead of the block. Ooh. Um, you could. I I thought. And again, that takes just a little bit of technique with the palette knife. And when and teaching these classes, I try to make it as simple as possible. But yes, you could do. And a palette knife also, because of how nice and bodied our paint, uh, the folk art paint is, um, it would give you like some nice, you could even get some textures in there, like with the body of the paint showing. So yeah, you absolutely could use a palette knife. Um, but for this, I think this is kind of foolproof, and that's why we're using it. Sometimes with a palette knife, because of the handle, it's a little hard for people to use. Okay, so now with the darker color, we're going to do the same thing. And I just patted on the color, and then I'm just rubbing my block around just to get some paint on it. And again, you can start really light if you want, just by using just the edge. And see how I just did that? Just a little bit. So this, I'm just going to do... Maybe some darker areas. And we're just layering, just like what we did, only now it's just darker. So was there a question about stencil tape? Or? Uh, yeah, so oh, just a okay. little bit about that. I know Marie, you're oh, using the what, folk art. Oh, okay. About the stencil tape, like why do you what use? What type of tape? Uh, yeah, okay, it's, it's folk art stencil tape. tape, and this is it. It's just, it's it's uh, looks like masking tape. And you might be asking, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. um, with stencil tape, when you're stenciling, you, you can tape down your stencil and then easily remove it. Uh, but you can also use it for something like this, which we masked off the, where the trees were. And um, hang on, let me just get, I need a little bit more paint. And it's low tack. So masking tape, regular masking tape, you know, is kind of sticky. So. Um, stencil tape is very similar to like what you use when you're doing painter's tape, that kind of thing. So here we go. Here's an idea. Somebody asked me about the raw edge. This is a little bit too wide doing this, this right here. See how I kind of hung out up here and right here with paint? So I'm going to use the edge because that's thinner. And that's going to be the rough edge of the wood. So we'll watch how that happens. So I use like, if you look at, this is my plot for my studio. This is like layers and layers and layers. So you can use like the, oh, the different sizes. Oh yeah, see, look at that, that's cool. That's so cool. I know, it's like fun. So it doesn't matter which side of the block you use. Just I think this is absorbing a lot more paint. Um, and that's another reason for buying the distressing tool from for the big one if you're gonna do furniture, is it the, the because the tool is already um, sealed for you, it won't absorb the paint. Um, so I'm using just the, even the little edge now. What I'm gonna when you get to your big tree, remember to leave a big, a, a large area for your heart. You don't want to put too much dark back there. So we're gonna come down, do some darks, but then we're also gonna leave an area for our heart that we don't. And then you know they have knots in them, so you can do like something a little bit darker. And. Honestly, Suzanne, with this block and this technique, you're mm -hmm. making this look effortless. Like, yeah, it, it looks really, like a tree. It really anyone is effort. Can do this. Yes, Absolutely anybody. Anyone can do this. Children. And, you know, just like what I just did here, you can really tell. Like, I'm just tapping the block on and then it's kind of pulling it. And it's, it's really just, see, so it really makes it look like, like a tree. And then I'm using just the edge. And, again, you can make some cuts in various places. You know, there's really no wrong way no to wrong do this. Way. You also could, you know, if you wanted to, you could go back and you could add some leaves in the background or some branches if you wanted to. You know, you could, you know, just do a little white branch. So this the, it's actually just endless, all your possibilities. You're going to want to do trees now. Just for, like, oh, look at that. See, I oh. discover new things all the time. Watch. This was just this, and then I 
pulled it oh, down. Oh, yeah. So see, I mean, you can do, and this is helping this one tree become, then see that kind of looks like a knot. So I do it and then pull it down. And then we're going to have our shadow right here again. So I'm gonna get, um, and now I'm just gonna use this little part to do. Ooh. So I'm just using all parts of the little block. And hello to Jan, her studio. Tell us about your studio, Jan. They use folk art, which is so great. Oh, Thank you, Jan. Yes. Yeah. And, and if you're just now joining us, be sure to, you can always replay this and use the discount code in the description of the video to get a discount on folk art supplies and paint along with us. Replay this video at any time in our on-demand library of videos. Okay, so how are you guys doing? Woo! Oh, wow, my goodness, that looks awesome. Okay, that's awesome, guys. So we're almost ready to do our hearts. So hopefully you out there, you're ready to go with the hearts. So we're gonna, we'll put our block. Now, I just sometimes just toss my block in the water and just let it float around, but I'm gonna wait just in case I need to do something else with it. Um, um, I'm gonna set it to the side and it's okay if it dries since it's just a little scrap piece of wood. Suzanne, will you show mm -hmm. some of your heart samples? Oh yeah, let's did? do some heart samples. So you guys, this is a pet sample and like spot. If you have like a dog or a cat or a bird or a lizard or whatever you have as your little pets, kittens. And then uh, you could do a uh, shout out again to Jen, Jen and Bill. They're getting a lot of shout outs. Um, uh, you could do names, you could do I love you, you could do the year, you could do your anniversary we heard someone's doing. We heard someone say they were gonna do their grandchildren. So you could do multiple hearts on your tree if you want. Um, you could do just words and you don't have to do the heart. It's up to you. So it's, so let's go on now to doing our heart. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, now we have, um, what we recommended were uh, a lot of the folk art um, liner brushes um, because you want something that is fairly uh, thin. So this one is a three, uh, three round. Okay, so, but if you don't have the three round, we have this, this is a great set. Uh, if you, uh, if you want to get a really good set that has a lot of different liner brushes, it has, you know, the rounds, it has a few of just the flats and lots of, it's like this one is a, a tenth, which is a little bitty one. And you know, some people like to be very detailed. So this is a great variety pack. Um, and good quality brushes. So we're going, I'm gonna use the, the number three round, and now I'm going to, and I am gonna grab a little bit of water, um, and that's only because when you're doing things like these outlining and letter work, you want the paint to flow. You don't want it to get real sticky and stiff. Not that it's sticky, it's just it's thick, and this is a good quality paint, so we want it a little bit thinner so that we can draw with it. Are you guys ready to do the hearts? <laughs> I hear a lot in the peanut gallery behind me. I don't even know. So we don't we're know either. Okay. So we're going to start the heart. And you're again, we're going to put some water in the paint just to get it really smooth. And then I'm going to twirl my brush. See, I'm just going to spin it like that. And that will make it have the little point on it. Okay. Now, when we go over to do the heart, what you're going to do is you're gonna pick your area and we're going to think about this. For me, this I like to do a lot of freehand work. So for me, I really have to stop and think about this. So if you don't do a lot of freehand work, don't be scared by this because you want to actually make it look like it's been carved. So there's no really wrong way to do it, to paint. So what you're gonna do is think about if this was your carving tool, you're gonna to pick up some paint and let's pretend like we're carving. And we can always go back and make it darker. But carving, you usually just do, because this is wood, so you're going to want to do just straight, straight cuts. Because if you were cut, you're not going to be able to do like a super smooth circle. It would be really hard in the tree. So let's pretend like we're, we're actually using a cutting tool. So that's what, so there's really, like I said, you can't really mess this up because of that. So... So one thing that is kind of unique, I like to think, is I went down, and now when I start the other side, if I was carving, I would probably want to go over this. So this nice little X kind of makes it a, makes it, a, that's like a trait, I would think, that makes it look a little bit more carved than perfect. 
Okay, so I'm going over. And I'm just doing straight lines, kind of blocky. And again, you don't have to do it straight up and down. It could be to the side of the tree or like it's wrapping around the tree. And again, I'm just, I just keep reapplying paint. And then again, when I get to the bottom, I pretend like I'm carving and I'm gonna just cross over a little bit. Okay. So now that's one, that's one heart. Now you could go back if you wanted to and you wanna do like, I might wanna do like a little accent heart here. And I'm gonna again, make it kind of rough. I don't want it perfect because if it's perfect, it won't look like it's been carved. Okay, so that's another. And now I wanna also do where I have like an arrow coming through it. So let's see, let's go this way. Oh, cute. And then let's carve like a little, just simple little arrow tail. And again, just straight lines, not perfect. Don't worry about it being perfect because there's no right or wrong. And then I'll do my little arrow. Now you can't see this. So what I'm gonna, I'll go back and we'll use a little bit of the thunder gray to accent that in just a minute. Okay, so now I gotta think of what I'm gonna do in my heart. You know, what am I gonna, what am I gonna say? So I think I'm just gonna write the word love in mine because I love painting for you guys, even though they're all, oh, it's not quiet, everybody's Hey, and speaking of they love, obviously, I think yeah. everyone's gonna love the painting on March 1st. Oh, yeah. The event listing is about to be up for that. So if you're watching us now, be sure to check out our Facebook page, approximately 8.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's gonna go live and we're gonna actually preview it at the end of uh, this painting when you're done, right, Suzanne? Yes, and let me tell you, one thing I can tell you about the painting, I did it, uh, I painted it at the Creativation and I had several people want to go purchase this as a pet. So that's the Ooh. subject matter. And it yeah. starts with l l lucky. L lucky. Lucky. <laughs> Reveal that too. Yeah. I can wonder what it could be. <laughs> A large, no. Okay, so, so again, see how I didn't make this perfect? And, the, and so you don't have to be a, a, a calligraphist to be able to do this. You can just, you know, paint it. Um, you could also do script if you want, you know? It has a really cool, like, organic yeah. look Yeah, and then, to like, it. maybe right here, I just want to do just um, the oh. year. And it's like I carved it just in the tree. So, again, just don't, it's, it's actually hard for me to just make, to make it look, it's like I want to do it just perfect, so I have to make sure I let my pen, you know, make my paintbrush. I, I start with a little point sometimes, and then I push down, and then I pull back up, and that makes it like thick and thin. So I'm doing an eight. I gotta remember what year it is. I almost did a seven again. It's the new year. Okay. <laughs> So see how easy that was? You made that look so easy. Suzanne. It's so easy. I mean, actually, this would be <clears throat> precious for children to do. It'd be so cute. You know, even if you had them maybe draw it in pencil and then you went back if you felt yeah. like it, you know, felt like they weren't quite old enough to hold the paintbrush and paint with it, maybe they could draw it. Maybe they could draw it on a separate piece of paper and you could transfer it on. Just uh, that, that would be really cool that you could have them write little things. And then, you know, we could go over here and I could... Do another heart just on another tree because you know people are and, and you're also you'll be shading this as well is that yes. the next step yes that's our next step so now you're going to rinse your paintbrush out and we're going to use some of the um, thunder gray uh, again and I'm gonna add just a little bit of water just to make sure it flows now because if you're if you ever feel like your paintbrush is scrubbing the paint the canvas and you hear like a scrubbing sound that just means you need a lot more paint or you need to add a little bit of water if it's dried out, you know, while you were, you know, I don't know, you let your, you didn't put enough paint on your paintbrush or, but anytime it's scrubbing, um, that's what, that's what's happening. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. It's just like a little drop shadow up underneath the heart. So we're just gonna go up under the side on one side. So we feel like, pretend like at the, the light, so the light is coming is here. up here. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to go over here. And this is where I told you we were going to do where you can see the arrow. So I'm just going to do that so I can kind of tell where the arrow was. 
And again, I'm going to go mm -hmm. under. And again, spin your paintbrush. Spin it in your hand. Spin it in your hand, and that'll give you a nice point to be able to draw with. So oh, I'm we're go. getting a lot of hearts out there. Oh, thank good. you, hearts. Good. Yes, Susan. yes. <laughs> Yes, this is so fun. I mean, honestly, you can see the possibilities are endless. And can you think, I mean, if you did just a huge canvas, like in your family That'd room. That'd be so cute. And, you know, you could do this. This would be a great thing to do, like at a family reunion. And then have That's everybody paint their own <gasps> heart on your trees. A, Maybe yeah. pre-paint all the trees, but just have this, a wedding. A wedding. Sign yes. in. Guest book. Yes. I like it. All they do is just come up and paint a heart. What is so good again, idea. This is not, a, you know, perfect. You just want to go up, uh, you know, just pick one side of the, and you're just going to do like a little highlight. Just gives it some, a little bit of depth. And again, don't worry if, don't say, oh, I'm not sure I'm doing it from the right lighting. Just do a little bit on either side, and it'll, it'll have that effect. There's no mistakes. It's just fun. And a, a lot of hearts out there, Suzanne. Good. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. I really, really send your painting. Take a picture of your painting. And if you're on Instagram, a hashtag us at hashtag plaid crafts and let us see your paintings. Yeah, paint. hashtag paint with oh, plaid. Paint with plaid. And hashtag plaid crafts yes. and hashtag paint with paint plaid would be so great. And we're wishing everyone out there happy Valentine's, Galentine's, yes. or just cozy night in next week. Absolutely. So how are we doing? I think this is a... I think, I think that's think looking we, great, Suzanne. And I mean, time-wise, are we doing... We are, we're perfect time-wise. We're perfect. Okay. We are so perfect time-wise. Okay, yep. good. Okay. Oh, look at that. I think that looks great. That's fun. Suzanne. So let's take a look at everybody else's. <laughs> oh, look. Don't look at Murphy's. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cute. Oh, I like <laughs> that little paw print. <laughs> Forever. Looking at what the, what you created tonight, the mm -hmm. church birch painting mm -hmm. looks so good. And should we reveal next month? Let's reveal painting. Next okay. Month. okay, so March 1st, the event listing literally just went live. So this is what we're gonna paint. Ooh. Ooh. It's a little, it's it's a riff off of a llama. You could say a llama, but this a is a lucky llama. A lucky llama, but this is kind of like a little alpaca too, because little alpacas have like smaller faces. And they're a little sweeter and they don't spit, I think, as much. <laughs> so, but here's the coolest thing about this painting. We're going to use metallics. We're going to use a new folk art color. We're going to use... Um, Pretty glitterific. Glitterific, which is, which is so brand exciting. new. We're also going to use some color shift. I don't know if you have used color. And Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Mega Sparka. glitter. Yes. Oh, mega glitter. Brand new. Oh, yay. So we've got all kinds of things that we're going to use. We have so many new products out. I think at Creativation, we'd had like 500 new products, but all of it is so fun. Um, again, we're going to use a little dauber, uh, and um, this is just a really fun painting that we're going to we're going to paint uh, next month. And I hope you can join us. The other thing is this is on wood. Um, this is a wood canvas, so that's also different instead of using just a regular canvas. And it it. it, it uh, the paint is affected differently on woods. So it's a new way of learning how to paint. So fun, Suzanne. And if you missed painting this from the beginning, you can always replay it on demand. Right. Suzanne is teaching the Lucky Llama Lucky on Llama. March 1st. Check out our Facebook page, hashtag your creations, paint with plaid. And we cannot wait to see you on March 1st. Okay, we'll see you Thank then. Thank you. Bye. Woo!